Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rideau Hall, the home of the people of Canada. Bienvenue. Ici à Rideau Hall, la maison du peuple de Canada. Welcome uh, to Rideau Hall, uh, the home of the people of Canada. Week. And we're here to discuss and share some ideas on where giving is headed, how we can encourage Canadians to give, and how we can build sustainable giving in the long term. For me, this day is very personal. Almost seven years ago, in October of 2010, I said in my installation speech that volunteerism and philanthropy are essential to a smart and caring nation. And both of those adjectives are important, smart and caring. Depuis mon installation à titre de Gouverneur Général. So since my installation uh, in 2010, I've uh, traveled through each province and territory, and that's how I've been able to uh, note uh, how we are truly a uh, intelligent and a caring nation. You would think then that I would have a solid grasp on the idea of giving, but to define it is uh, still quite tricky. It's the country we've seen giving evolve and change into something wholly different than what my grandparents were accustomed to. They were Methodists, they were very poor, and 10% of all of their income went first to charitable causes through the church. And that was the first 10%, and there was never any question about where and when that 10% would go. It was the first thing. And they were very happy people. New technologies, for example, have made giving easier but have also presented their fair share of challenges. It's wonderful we can show our support of a cause through likes and retweets, but of course we have to go further if we want to make a real and lasting impact. From what I've seen, while there are common elements to how and to why people give, there's no single approach. Instead, we have targeted and innovative giving that meets the needs, specific needs of a community. And if there's one thing I've learned in my time as Governor General, and the great thing about a job like this is you're learning all the time, it's this, giving is transformative. We were just chatting earlier about an observation that came from Vancouver, I think, early on in our discussions about giving. This would be six years ago now. And uh, one of our commentators says, what we need in Canada is radical permission to give radical permission. That's a radical idea for a non-radical nation, isn't it? We've met with Canadians of all ages and backgrounds who open their hearts and giving back in countless ways. Their giving not only has changed lives, including their own, but also has the potential to change whole communities. At this point, I usually tell my mother Teresa's story. I won't. Those of you who don't know it, ask your neighbor. Your neighbor will tell you because there are some people in this room who have probably heard it about 25 times. <laughs> but it's how we change the culture of the country one drop at a time. So many particular examples. One is Fogel Island, Newfoundland and Labrador through the Shorefast Foundation. I urge you to visit that remarkable place. It's helping to diversify the economy of this rural community, which was once almost solely dependent upon the cod fishery. And when the cod disappeared, seven villages disappeared in terms of their livelihood. And Fogo Island was devastated. Well, thanks to the work of Shorefast Foundation, Fogo Island has reinvented itself and is preserving its traditions and cultures and creating new opportunities for residents through ecotourism. On peut commencer à donner très tôt dans la vie. Giving can start at a very young age. Consider the example of Hannah Taylor of Winnipeg, who at age five wondered why, why there were homeless and hungry people when there was so much to share in a society where we have so much and at five years of age, she decided to do something about it and recruited a bunch of volunteers and givers. Today, more than 10 years later, her organization, the Ladybug Foundation, has helped to raise millions of dollars for projects across the country, including shelters and food banks.
need and inspired by individuals affecting an entire community. So that's the power of philanthropy. That's the power of volunteerism. But as all of you in this room know, we cannot be complacent. We have a unique challenge facing us. Canadians are generous. You've seen this. We've all seen this. We care deeply about causes and are smart about how we give, but too few Canadians are actively involved. Too many are sitting on the sidelines. Too many do not have the right motivation to give. So how do we change this? Well, by finding the right inspiration. And let me share another story with you. I fear I'm a storyteller, but I try to hang a lesson on this story. I was Maybe the best job I had apart from this one was being Dean of Law at Western University because you really get to know the students. There are 150 students in first year class and in those days you'd have, um, you'd have photographs of the pictures and the students, not allowed anymore. We'd do a composite class photograph and 15 days before registration day I would memorize the names and faces of 10 students each so that when the 150 arrived, I could address them by first name and say, ah, oh, you're from my hometown, you're Sault Ste. Marie, nice to see you. And of course, the poor kid would say, my gosh, you know, the dean has already got the book, I'm going to have to work hard every day. But it was to make them feel at home. But the one privilege I'd ask for is that I'd be the first one to meet the students on their first day of class. And I would say to them, you're about to enter a noble profession. I hope you love the law as I love the law and come to make a distinction between law, which are the written rules, and justice, which are the set of values lying behind those. And always ask yourself, is law just? Is this particular law just? Does it accord with your sense of fairness and justice and so on? And because you have precious skills, I would urge you to consider giving 10% of your time for pro bono work, your skills. And I guarantee you, that as much as you'll enjoy the other 90%, and I know you will, you'll enjoy that 10% even more. I cannot tell you how many, many, many times I've been at a function of some kind and a former student comes up and says, you know, Dean, you remember that first day you told us about the 10%? Well, I haven't quite been able to do 10%, but I'm doing two or three or 4% and I'm, I'm really trying. And you know, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of satisfaction in what I do when I'm billing my time, and there's even more when I'm doing it pro bono. I love that story because it tells us so much about human nature and our experience of giving. It is a good thing to do, and it helps the others who receive, but it helps those who are on the giving end. Not only does giving make a difference to others, it means something to us. And this kind of generosity leads to a wonderful reciprocity of giving, a virtuous circle. And you know, it's, it's both sides of the equation. Another story I tell is I, I grew up in Sault Ste. Marie where he learned to skate before he learned to walk. And uh, I think I was 15 and there was a scout from the Toronto Maple Leafs coming into town. Uh, and, and we were playing a game in the one indoor arena, which was a big deal. Uh, in those days we normally played an outdoor arena on a Friday night. And I got a call on Thursday night from the owner of a sporting goods store, a small business guy, not a man of any particular wealth. And I had never had a new piece of equipment. As a matter of fact, the stuff I was using as equipment and skates and so on was about 6th or 7th hand Salvation Army. And he said, come to my store um, an hour, hour and a half before the game uh, tomorrow night. I've got something for you. Will you come? I said, of course, sir. I'll be there. So I arrived there and he had a new pair of skates for me. I put on those skates. I scored three goals that night. And I tell you, it was the skates. It wasn't my skill. <laughs> But you know, I remember that to this day. I mean, I was the recipient of a wonderful gesture on this man, and I know it gave him a kick. It certainly gave him a kick when I scored a few goals. Um, and you know, that is a kind of thing in a community like Sault Ste. Marie that goes so far. So that's what motivates people to give, that feeling that you've done something meaningful and fulfilling for yourself and for others. So again, as practical people, we say, how do we encourage that? How do we harness that energy? How do we move people from watching to doing? How do we go from what? Question I often ask. So what? The question I ask after that. And then now what? The question I ask after so what? Les questions qui se posent alors sont les suivantes. The questions become how do you encourage that? How do you harness that energy? How do you move people from watching 
to doing? How do we go from what to so what to now what? All of you are gathered here today and know exactly how to do this. You've uh, been successful in persuading people to become actively involved. Nonprofit and corporate leaders, academics, public servants, and you're here to help us strengthen our giving culture, to strengthen the culture, the very fundamental elements of our society. You're here because you know that this is an issue that affects all of us. You know how we can work together for the common good. I'd like also to mention that today marks another milestone. It's the closing of the My Giving Moment campaign. This national social marketing initiative gave rise to a new community of Canadians who shared their stories online and on social media platforms to inspire people to get involved. I'm so very thankful to all of the partners who have joined us in this journey, many of whom are here with us today, and in particular, a few marvelous souls that I'm looking at, a few of them right now, who were with us in the very first days of the Philanthropy and Voluntarism Advisory Committee, which we set up to help us with this notion of a smart and caring nation, which had three pillars, family and children, learning and innovation, philanthropy and voluntarism. And we weren't quite sure where we were going when we started that journey. And I guess if we knew then what we knew now about how to use the power of this office, um, we would have uh, done some interesting things. But I've got to tell you how pleased I am with what came out of those original advisory ideas, where we spent a little time thinking, and um, perhaps a little later when Annabelle is interviewing me or cross-examining. Where are you, Annabelle, Chief Inquisitor? She's out preparing the questions, I think. Uh, I'll comment a little bit about uh, that historical beginning and what we try to achieve and what we do. So where do we go from here? Où allons-nous maintenant? Well, we must go further. Nous devons aller plus loin. Let's not be satisfied with the status quo. We should strive for something better, something stronger. As communities, as a country, we must innovate and find creative ways to give. Giving, after all, is an important form of nation building, which puts people first. Continuons à mobiliser nos talents, notre expertise et notre énergie afin de susciter un mouvement national pour comprendre et favoriser les générosités au Canada. I encourage you to take this opportunity to meet new people, to learn from different experiences and sectors, and help us pinpoint the questions we still need to ask. It's one of the functions of this office to connect, honor, and inspire Canadians that we bring together remarkable, talented, energetic people like you so that we all learn from one another and have those lessons transferred from place to place. I look forward to learning from your perspectives today. Merci.